Hi, Teen Flyer. How are you today? Welcome. It's um, it's another day, obviously another Wednesday. I'm getting nervous as I speak because I have this beautiful soul in front of me and my thoughts need to come back with me. Anyways, we are doing another month-long special um, because we adored last month's special, by, of course, with Brianna Salas. Um, and today we have the beautiful, the talented Belisa Escobedo. Belisa Escobedo. I, yes. Hi, first of all. Hello. I want to like tell everyone and remind again what people like what Go to Fly is all about and whatnot. But even though you and me have been talking for weeks, I'm like, I get equally as excited when I start, like when I hit record as well. <laughs> because first of all, like I love sharing your story and like my guest story because it's so like inspiring. But also it's you. So I'm like, literally, since the day I met you, I'm like, I'm a little bit of a fangirl with you, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so before that, let me, let me refresh what, you know, Go to Fly is all about. You know, we're here to help people to hear our message loud and proud. Go to Fly is, you know, made to stand up for yourself, to be your own hero, to work hard for your goals, to be yourself, and many, many more things people need to hear. You know, we participate with real stories from around the world telling tales of rough paths and big journeys. It's so poetic of me. Um, can you tell I'm reading people? Seriously, though, um, we've been doing Go to Fly. Like I always say, we started with blog posts and conferences and workshops um, in Spain and here in, and here in Massachusetts till COVID hit. And then we have a podcast. So every single week we have new episodes about inspiring stories. Last month in August, like I said, we did we had a whole month long with uh, Brianna Salas, and the special guest was her girlfriend, Lauren Sanderson. And like, here we are with Melissa Scobedo. Um, I am in love that I'm talking to you, and that you know, you're I don't know, I I bigger in the booty. That's all I can say right now. <laughs> That's the first thing I should have said. <laughs> <laughs> just such a star so hi how are you my love I'm good I'm good I'm so happy to you know be finally doing this with you I know we've been talking about it for a while um and yeah yeah uh, my name's as you said Belisa Escobedo uh <laughs> and some of you might have seen me on Baker and the Beauty what, um, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, that was one of my first big acting jobs. Um, I'm from East Los Angeles, and I I went to a performing arts high school, but uh, I have just recently, you know, touched the surface of the industry. So this is all very, very new to me, um, and I'm enjoying the ride so far. Yay! It's been wild. <laughs> um, yeah, my personal fangirl moments because of that. I think we started talking, I'm assuming... I know it's been a while by now what it feels like, um, because we did an interview Natalie Kelly for Latina. Yes. We had her on, because yes. we, like, she wrote to me saying, oh my God, I love what you do, and then that was, like, a really instant connection, and she's just, just the biggest sweetheart on earth, and we talked a whole bunch before we recorded with her, um, well, me and her, and then, you know, we were like, oh, let's have you for Latina, and so you can hear Natalie Kelly, <laughs> your co-host, your co those are my co-hosts, but you're a star. <laughs> um from Baker and the Beauty and through that I was like I had to reach out to you because I love your work and it's just that character I fell in love with her immediately but also with your acting like I told you this oh. the first day and I'm like I gotta tell you first and then we can talk about like spooky stuff and Halloween and cat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is that that's what we do now so that like, is all we discuss <laughs> <laughs> too we go in death we go in death this is why we're you know recording these episodes as well we have quite yeah. a few things in common, <laughs> which i appreciate yeah. as well um it's always good and yeah so let's get talking a little bit we um what do we have for right now we're talking with you all month long about eating disorders about addiction about social issues because it's one of my favorite things about you as well that you're always standing up for like causes yeah. and what I always say, it doesn't matter how big or small your account is, the fact that you're using your platform for good, like you're on my like A++ list, <laughs> basically. Like that's just amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. And all the self-love and self-care in the world, of course. <laughs> yes, the most important part. Exactly. Um, disclaimer, it's 2020 and this is all about Zooms. 
you have dogs and cats. I have a dog and a cat. He has, she has a squeaky tour now. The family's in the living room. So, excuse the background noise. There's not much I can do. For yeah. right now. But we just, if, you, if you're here from before, you know the roll call. You can hear a random meow or bark. Of, you know, that's just, that's life. <laughs> that's life. Yeah, here in Zoom calls. I've got six animals right now. Three of each. So... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows which one you're gonna hear? <laughs> exactly, because I just heard her sweetie toy, and that she loves it so much, and I'm like, oh gosh. Uh, and you can't take it away; it's too heartbreaking. It really is, <laughs> and she's so good as well. Like she really doesn't bark; she's just kind of like, I just, I'm just hanging, I'm just chilling. If you're my toy, and I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> All right, so today we're diving in to eating disorders. As you want to share your story and leave a message with it as well. So let's dive in. Let's talk about where it started, when it started, because I believe that you were just about five years old when it started. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's um, crazy to think about. It is, you know, and you don't, um, one thing is I'm learning most of this or realizing most of this now as I'm at this big age of 21. <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> But, Girl, please. And no, I'm you kidding. You can still, but you have a lot of wisdom, though. Like, I do give you. I, I believe age is nothing yeah. but a number because I also grew up fast. And I know that you grew up yes. fast for different the same reasons, no matter how you grew up fast. When you do that, 21 feels older, I guess. I don't know. So it give does. yourself props. And it's your birthday Definitely. month. So we're yes. going to be 22 soon. Virgos for the win. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> you have my brother's birthday, which is like, I thought that was really cool. I get but, like happy when like oh my god same birthday at so and so and i just get i don't know why i do that but I'm oh like, i'm the same way <laughs> oh, i know all the celebrities who have my birthday <laughs> oh my god me too yeah all right all right oh my god see this is what we're talking about this is why i know we're chill we're friends we're like we got it <laughs> you got it we got it <laughs> like i'm still gonna admire the f out of your work because holy moly baker and the beauty and natalie and just like, ah, yes yeah. <laughs> and so much for you to come i can't wait to like for the world to see you glow even more but let's go back to okay, when you shared the story with me, it gave me chills and it made me freaking cry. Oh, and man. like people who know me are like, I damn that you cry for everything. <laughs> like I'm, you're <laughs> <That's> emotional. <me. laughs> it's like you're emotional. You see a butterfly and you're so happy you cried. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, as a woman that, you know, did have eating disorders and I still struggled to some extent your story let's go back into it yes. at uh five years old sadly and truly go ahead my love yes um so really the first memory that i can remember of anything to do with eating or my body um i was five years old and i was standing in front of the mirror in my parents bedroom and I was looking at myself and I was wearing this really pretty dress. I believe it might've been Easter, some holiday. Um, and so I was wearing a really beautiful dress and I just remember being so angry at my reflection. And I was so, so disappointed in what I saw and I started crying and you know, what was going through my head was what these kids at school were telling me. Um, which I learned later from my mom. But anyway, in that moment, it was just five-year-old me and I can still see myself, like my little girl self, like, you know, having so much pain at such a young age and this, this disgust for yourself. Um, and I was even, you know, punching down my stomach because I I just wanted it gone. It was as if there was like a balloon in there or or something, you know? Um, and so then I remember later on talking to my mom about it when I was in high school. Um, and at first I thought it might've been a dream, and, but I told her about it and, and she said, no, you know, I do remember that day very clearly. Um, and I did end up going, you know, I did see like a therapist at that time um, when I was young. And that's when, you know, it started coming out that I was getting really like heavily bullied. And at that point I was in kindergarten, I, I think. Um, and my 
mom was telling me that it, it had started even in preschool, really, is when I started coming home and telling her, you know, so-and-so's calling me fat. They're asking me if I'm pregnant or if I have a balloon under my shirt. And so, which is why, you know, I was standing there trying to pop that balloon. Um, but, you know, thinking about that now, it, like five years old, that's just... That's, that's inhumane. That's yeah, like... Yeah, it, it really... The fact that you get so teased and bullied already at a young age, that's how people have to start comprehending that this is not just something that teenagers go through. Yeah. Or... I mentioned, I always give props to all my, all my go to fly guests and this movement behind that we created and whatnot. And one of them, I always, when we we're talking about eating disorders, I give props to Lorraine um, Laddish, who just turned 57 last month. And she talks all about her eating disorder when she was not only in her teenage years, but also like in her 30s. Mm. And for me, that's really impactful because, you know, age i mean eating disorders don't they don't have an age they don't have a number they don't have a skin color they don't have a sex they don't have you know what i mean it can come in all different sizes and shapes and it can hit you at 40 years old all of a sudden Mm -hmm. um so the fact that it already starts for most at that young age even that people like kindergartners calling you fat like first of all that's just wrong but telling you you're pregnant Mm -hmm. you're like first of all it's not even possible like come on i know you're a kid i know why would you give (laughs) that what adult will give that to a kid, that kind of trait of thought, you know? Exactly. And, and that's really what I would always, what I still can't like fathom is just what were they experiencing at home? You know, what, what, what conversations were being had? And for me, it just really drives home this message um, that eating disorders or just not even eating disorders, but the whole stigma behind body shaming, um, just all of that, that world. Um, It does start at a very, very young age because it's so ingrained in our society, Mm -hmm. in how we talk about women, men, anyone. Um, That's why you see it in kids. That's why you start seeing it like so early because that's, and it's also what we're watching, you know, it, it has so much to do with all these factors. It really does. And I think, I think it's more, it like, it's more than we think. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, yes. even what we see, it's more than we think. Um, there was a show, I can't remember the name right now. I know it's on Netflix, I think. Anyways, um, I just started watching it. That's why I can't remember the name, to be honest, right now. <laughs> Um, with a, uh, with, with a cousin, with my husband's cousin, but still, she's a teenager and whatnot. And one of the, these are two, they're twins and their mom was calculating the food intake of the girls as like, you should be skinnier. And like these two girls are like, they're really skinny. They're pretty, the typical girls you see, like, you know, sadly and truly as like main characters Mm -hmm. on any TV show. And I was like, the fact that we still see these kind of things, though, it kind of, at the end of the day, is still really, really wrong. Yes. Like, kind of, like, why are you putting these characters, not the twins itself, not the teenage girls, but, like, a character like the mom, why are you giving that that spotlight to that person exactly. at this point or rate? Yes, it rares, raises awareness to some extent, but because it's so, it's everywhere. In Love, Victor, I love that show, Love, Victor, but even one of the parents... What the mom from one of the characters tells her the exact same thing. If you're going to put a message behind it, great. But if you're just going to put it in just to put it in, you don't know how that's going to affect people who, who have eating disorders. You know what I'm trying to get at? Yes. Kinda like- no, absolutely. Affecting, you know, people who have eating disorders. And also just, if you're throwing it in to throw it in, all you're doing is helping to normalize it. Exactly. To make Thank people, yes, that. To, to make the younger generation and even, you know, older people, anyone at any age can see that if they're continuously seeing this story and nothing's being done about it. It's kind of just like, this is what people go through at home. This is normal. 
Um, exactly. That's that's terrible. and that's why like I haven't continued watching the show not because I didn't like it. It's just because lack of time to be honest. Mm-hmm. With Love Victor, I saw the whole thing and they did address it. So I love that. And with Love Victor, they do address a lot of th- different things. So definitely yeah. give props and like love for that show. But that's the point. Like you gotta have to like you gotta make sure that there's a, a connection there of a message. Yes. Because if not, it makes no sense. And this is how that show that I was watching. I mean, I'm not saying a five year old can watch it by any means, but it could be in the background. They could have an older sibling, and the five year old just listens to that randomly, and you're like, "Oh, this is normal." You know, I have to be that weight, or I have to be that kind of, um, or look a certain way, or I don't know. So it it's definitely it's heartbreaking and outstanding in a bad way in this case that like it starts at so such a young age and this ties into what we're saying um when i introduced you you do you talk about a lot of social causes natalie kelly our beautiful wonderful love natalie kelly like her you know people like her using the platform for good yes she's this absolutely is what we, amazing yes <laughs> like this is something that we need to like thrive more basically and like surround ourselves and like make sure that we push that Yeah, really push the change because I think at this point we're all aware that it's happening and, you know, we're aware of the effects it has. Um, But we really need to start, even in our own lives, because it starts with us, um, of making those changes. You know, I was talking to my mom last night and we were talking about how we've realized that we've had to work through these, um, trying to find the word, like, not, I guess, stereotypes in our own head um, of what looks good on someone, of, you know, what type of body type is wearing this. And I'm very lucky that, like, I feel like in my generation, the body body positivity movement definitely took off. And so I felt like at very early on, I was kind of like, okay, everyone wears what they want, you know, what, like, move on. But I see it in older generations really struggling with that. And so my mom and I were talking about that and it was just really interesting, you know, to bring that up because it's so, so ingrained in in ourselves and we take it out on each other when really we just need to be ending it all together, you know, completely changing our way of thinking and the way we speak about weight and bodies, everything, so. Completely and utterly utterly agree sorry with everything you just said because I do see the change in my generation because I know we're definitely 10 years apart I want to say nine I think so. 10 yeah. I think 10 yeah and um so if I were to see the change with mine definitely I know with yours and younger they definitely see that change which is really good they yes. still struggle a whole lot nothing like the previous um generations so I talk about that a lot as well and the upkeep of it I have to bring, I yeah. keep saying the same name, which is now Kelly over and over again. And by the <laughs> case, in that episode we recorded with her for Latina, she, we did talk about this. And because she is not much older than me by any means, she's only like three years older than me, but she's like, I want, you know, starting with me, making sure that, you know, I don't have any operations done, of course, making sure that I show up without any makeup and I make sure that, you know, people see me in this, the most natural way possible. So it starts being normalized more. Yeah. So it goes back into that basically the whole generation thing. And um, as we continue, and as we continue, of course, apart from, you know, always giving props to Nana Kelly and like the whole Hollywood thing and making sure that we realize that we should have normalized conversations and normalize every type of body. Let's Mm -hmm. go a little bit back to your story, of course, because, you know, right now you're feeling much better. But let's go back and let's, well, let's go back, but also fast forward from kindergarten to all the way to your summer after eighth grade. Yes, yes. Um, The beginning of high school, I feel like that's always a troubling time for anyone, of course. But at that point in time, I, middle school was very bad. I'd say that was when the bullying was at its worst. Um, You know, and at that point, it was even I started realizing that adults were getting involved as well. And I think that's like, that just goes to show you that it never ends. It's not just kids being kids, you know, it's, it's at any age. Um, 
but so then that's really when it all started to affect me because beforehand I was, I guess I was just um, living in that childhood innocence of like, whatever, I'm still, you know, I'm good. But then it did really start to affect me. And so I did try to make this change of like, okay, well, I'm going to high school and, and I had just gotten into um, the performing arts high school that I ended up going to. And so it was really big. And, and I kind of told myself, if I want to be in this industry, if I want to make it, I've got to change. Like if I really want to have a good shot, which was a horrible way of thinking, totally unnecessary. <laughs> um, and so that's when I started. I remember I skipped my first meal and I remember the day I did it and everything. Um, and after that happened, it just seemed really easy. I was like, okay. And so I continued to do it and I, I started, you know, losing the weight and everything, but it, I would go to doctors and they, they wouldn't, um, Um, sorry, this is obviously, you know, very tough to talk about, it but is, and I appreciate you. We understand, we do. <laughs> but, um, I'm finding my place, so we'll, we'll get back to it. <laughs> Deep breaths and we're here to be as real, as honest we want to be and we can be, so we get it. Yeah. Thank you. Deep breaths, um, my love. So, you know, that summer after eighth grade was really when I, started to lose the weight and um you know what frustrated me the most in that point in time was that or looking back on it now is that i i didn't want to lose the weight i didn't think it was necessary at first you know and it was it was a learned bias it was it was all of these people you know um pretty much convincing me that my life wasn't going to be easy if I stayed this way. You know, happiness was going to be tough to achieve. Success was going to be tough to achieve. I even had my first ever acting coach um, when I was trying to get into this performing arts high school tell me that it was, I was going to have a really tough time as a bigger girl in this industry and that I wouldn't find many roles that were suitable for me. And that really affected me. Um, obviously, it felt like a wake-up call, even though it was not. And, and so I, I started to believe it. I started to really, really believe that they were right and that I needed to make this change in order to feel any happiness. And so I did. You know, I skipped a meal. I skipped my first meal and continued to do so. And I, I want to say it lasted for like over a year of me skipping and um, I lost a lot of weight. And when I would go to the doctors though, because in middle school, I was very obese is what they you know, said. Um, and so they, they were seeing this decline in weight, but because I still wasn't what they considered to be healthy weight, um, whatever that may be, they didn't, acknowledge or not acknowledge they didn't spot the toxicity that was going on that was developing in my brain this this illness you know this disorder um and i i get very frustrated thinking about that of course just because it, it feels like there was this bias and there is a bias in the medical field you know um it's always well, have you tried exercising? Have you tried eating better? And it's like, no, I'm telling you that like my stomach feels like it's about to burst, like blow up, like, no. Um, and so that happened for a pretty long time. Essentially, I would go to the doctors and for any illness and they would notice my weight and praise me. And, and I would tell them, you know, like, oh, well, it's because I skip dinner. I don't eat dinner. They'd be like, well, keep up the good work. 
Um, but they would never say that to someone who they consider to already be at a healthy weight. If someone was showing those signs of skipping meals um, and losing weight rapidly, they would immediately talk to the parents and you know refer them to these programs and get them the help that they need. Um, and for some reason, just because of my weight, I was denied that care until I reached a point where physically I was already so, so sick, so much more sick than I was when I was overweight and they were telling me I was sick because of my weight. Now I really had damaged my body. Um, and I ended up the only, the only reason they actually started, you know, treating me for an eating disorder is because I ended up in the emergency room, you know, three years later, mind you, it had been three years of all of this. And at that point, my gallbladder was just like destroyed. Um, and so I had these gallstones, I had to get them removed. And this was all happening my sophomore year of high school. I was, I think I hadn't even turned 15 yet. Um, and I was missing weeks of school. Um, and all because I, because I had this illness, you know, and it was, um, it really <laughs> deep breaths. <laughs> it for so long it had me trapped, you know, it it consumed me and it really debilitated me um in so many ways, both like physically and mentally and it, you know, I, I live with the consequences of my actions and it, the reason that it, I get, you know, so frustrated and so emotional about it is not only because I had to endure this pain and, and suffering, but because I know how many other girls or mm -hmm. people just in general are experiencing this and aren't being acknowledged aren't being validated because of their size all because of their size and there's such a big bias in the eating disorder community of where you know your disorder isn't validated unless you're at a certain weight and and that is just total like falsehood but it, it does make me very emotional because the people that are encouraging this are the doctors, you know, it, 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 it gets frustrating when the people who you think are, you know, supposed to help you, they don't. And, and they do eventually, you know, I, I've gotten wonderful treatment since then, and I'm very appreciative of all of it, but it, it, they miss the mark, you know, they, I, there were the red flags and I don't, that shouldn't happen from, you know, it, it's just, it is inhumane. Um, and I remember when they finally diagnosed me, um, they even told me that, you know, like, oh, we usually try to catch these things earlier. And I, I felt like screaming, you know, because it's like, I, I was telling you guys everything and, and no one was seeing me. I don't know how, but no one was seeing me. Um, and yeah, you know, that was, that was really tough, but that was pretty much um, the summer before eighth grade <laughs> or the summer after eighth grade. After um, eighth grade. Um, all right. Also deep breaths on my behalf, obviously. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I don't know where to begin, but I guess for me knowing myself, first of all, thank you. Thank you for sharing the story. There's still more to tell, obviously, right now, but thank you for um, speaking up, for for really speaking up, not only to share your story, and, like, the more you share it, the more power you gain from it, the more yes. control you have of it, the more, quote, unquote, comfortable you are, and the more you let go at the same time, so it's definitely something very, you know, rewarding and very something that you should appreciate about yourself that you're here regardless of the fact that we're like only one person will hear this podcast or a hundred thousand people will hear this podcast. It's something, yeah. you know, you're doing for yourself. 
and that you come forward and you, you've, you've gone through already through so much and you know that where you stand today. So that's the first thing. And um, also what you said that like, this is also for me the part like when I read your story and the one that, you know, because if you know the podcast, it makes sense that we talk about what we're going to talk about before we talk about it. So uh, she did write this and um, this is the part where I did start crying the most because I was thought, like you said, it's very inhumane because the red flags were there. And because since I've gone through something similar, I feel like it's probably someone that triggered it because when I was in an unhealthy way and was praised even by doctors and then yes when I was depressed because I had a whole lot of other factors that aligned towards that and I started gaining weight that's when like all the not only bullying but even what you said with the doctors and I was in a whole different country so it doesn't we're not even talking about this country we're just talking yeah. about, like, <laughs> in general even yeah and um people thought, you know, these doctors and just in general that I was being unhealthy and eating junk food all the time, which if you know me, that's not me since day one. Mm-hmm. That factor went back and forth. And then leading up to, you know, my hyperthyroidism, having doctors being so dismissive and what you said, oh, you should just work out more. And then you're like, do you just diagnose me with this first of all? And second of all, I can't work out like the girl next door because I'm not the girl next door in this particular case. Like my skin is, my weight or my, I forgot the word right now, but like constitution, there you go. It's different. Like you should give me things that for my body, knowing that I have hypothyroidism. Exactly. For example, just one of the many, many examples. that. So, and lastly, I guess with the three pointer in this particular case, what I'm trying to gather up my thoughts (laughs) Is, you know, you you share this story because the part that you started crying and I did too is because there's so many people out there. We we still say girls and still women. We know men have eating disorders. Yes, of course. We are there for you. They're with you because I've met quite a few. So we know people are out there struggling with the exact same thing. And this is why we speak up because if we're able to finally start talking about it because we feel better why not help uh, other people? So mm-hmm. I, I praise you and I, I'm so utterly thankful for you to share the story with me or just in general, just be like, yo, I'm owning my ish and here yeah. I am, <laughs> basically. Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and I think we're, we're so powerful in our stories and we don't realize it. Um, true, true, if, yes. If we all came together <laughs> you know, and shared these stories, we'd, we'd be limitless, really, and we could make the change. And it's just about making it a safe space, you know, making that safe yeah. space for everyone to feel like they can come forward about this. Exactly. Um, because like there's so there's like shame behind it as well. And it's like, and it's so silly to think that people are so ashamed, but once again, that society that throughout many years, I mean, I, I don't know, I have to check the year, I guess, technically speaking, hasn't been hundreds of years that people wanted just people to be skinny. You know what I mean? It's literally just been, quote unquote recently because we did yes. have you know people in the <laughs> way back when being all curvilicious and we did have Marilyn Monroe and everyone adored her you know what I mean and she was a thick thin girl but because it also landed it landed both ways it landed like on um it's still recent like this whole let's all be skinny and this is the only yeah accept. With the same type of technology was arising, mm-hmm. including television in this particular case. Of course, technology that we have nowadays, even more so. But, you know, so all the shows, everything you saw was that kind of person. So, like, that's where we are today. And yes. we, should, we need to come together. Like, we need to have that, like you said, you just said, that safe space. And that everybody is beautiful, literally. Yes. And I think Hollywood has a big impact, a big influence. I mean, obviously that's, you know, what we consume our media, but I think they really need to take responsibility and say like, you know what, in the past, we may may not have been putting the best images out there. Let's change that. Let's start changing the conversation. I hope they do. I really hope they do. I mean, me too. I know. I I know you're in the industry and I know, well, I I am too. We're doing Latina and we're doing a whole bunch of stuff and that's, 
for our community and that's for let's latinx bite base but this also yeah. comes with being curvilicious because that's what nastasia and me are it's like dude this is we want to see ourselves represented yeah but we're creating these things yeah we want to see ourselves on tv because we're also human beings exactly exactly like, and we deserve I, the same respect i know as- we're getting we do we do we do and sorry to cut you off, and I know no, we're going no. a little bit to the side of the conversation, but I'm bringing it back to Baker and the Beauty, because seeing you on screen, like, you have no idea how happy that made me. This is before I met you, obviously. <laughs> That's why, like, I love talking to you and being able to, like, um, have this conversation with you, of course, and sharing just your pure heart. But when I first saw the show and I saw your character on screen, and I'm like, hey, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like me, you know. And it's yeah. like, if that happened to me, and I'm 32, like imagine a teenager. And then yeah. if that wasn't enough, oh my God, this month we have. I can't think you hear the squeaky toy in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but this month we also have educational. Fr- well, every month we have educational Fridays here at the Always Believer. Um, last week we talked about being sexually abused, something that I'm a huge advocate about. And this month we're talking about teachers. Latinx teachers in U.S., basically, so minority teachers. And one of them, the one that's just with us all month long, uh, Vanessa from Empowered Teaching, she's Colombian, and she's also gotten like, oh my God, you're Colombian, and you, or you look like me, or you have the same skin color, and and she's got students like, I can be a teacher too? Yes. So it's, it goes both ways, both Hollywood, in teaching, in nursing, in lawyer, like, it's that, basically. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it is. It really is. And it it meant so much to me to be able to be that representation for some people, you know, and just because I know growing up, I was desperately, as I'm sure you were, like you just said, <laughs> um, desperately looking for just that representation. I mean, you don't realize how much it's needed and how much it affects you until you're deprived of it. Yes. Or until you finally get it and you're like, oh, this feels, um, I feel so like valid. Yeah, I feel seen. seen. Oh, (laughs) exactly. Props again. Um, We were able to interview her because I saw her in Project Runway, Ashley Nell Timpton. So go check out Latina for Natalie Kelly and Ashley Nell Timpton. And with her, I I told us also we have to get her on because I saw her and I'm like, I remember because my husband loves Project Runway. <laughs> That's amazing. We went on a binge earlier this year a little bit. And the moment I saw her and he was like, this is this is you. And I got so excited. And um, I loved my conversation with her, but everything she represents as well. And we talked about this a lot, of course. It's just you feel seen. Um, it's just there's something... It's hard to explain unless you go through it. And I feel like a lot of people who are listening to us have gone through it. So they're like, we get it. We see you. Like, we understand. Like, this is what we need. So that's what what we're proud of where we're from because we just want to have more representation of it. And once again, completely off topic with eating disorders. But, (laughs) but you know, it actually, it, it, and the same with eating disorders. Yeah. I feel like that's, it's the opposite or not the opposite, but with eating disorders, I feel like in media, there's a lot of toxic representation. Exactly. And that's kind of what we were saying earlier. Yeah. Um, But yeah, the media is super powerful. So Hollywood, get it together because I'm coming for you. (laughs) Exactly. We are here to change the world and I'm going to give a shout out. Of course, I keep repeating our podcast, Latina, but also Rebel Maverick, like that's Anastasia's company. We work that, well, I work there with them, of course. And it's all about representation. And so go support. I feel like I know this is a random promo here, but like support Baker and the beauty support programs and shows that, you know, you make you feel seen. Yes. And the more you do that, the more we are seen like we deserve. Mm -hmm. So after a little mini (laughs) break of like sentimental (laughs) stuff. Yeah. So you, you said a lot, you said that, you know, you've, you've, you got, you shared your tough stories with the doctors, Mm -hmm. you were already three years in your fourth ER visit. That's when you found out, that's when they started treating you. Yeah. So you also mentioned not, you know, right now, but you mentioned to me previously that throughout your high school and college, there was a lot of stuff that you blocked 
kind of yeah hit, you know ignore and i'm i'm the first person who does that and who did that <laughs> yes because we just ignore the negative so i understand where you're coming from so tell us more about that yeah you know i think um really it i blocked it out it seems like a blur i feel like everyone describes high school like a blur um <laughs> but what I didn't block out and what I remember the most are like the private moments and the, the big emotions that I was feeling. That's really what I can pinpoint is how I was feeling in that moment and you know, what was going through my mind. Um, and any, at any point in time during high school and that, you know, my one year stint in college, <laughs> um, any, period during those four years, like if you listen to the thoughts that were running through my head, it would be nothing but like food related, body image related. I was just over like run by this eating disorder. And um, I allowed myself to be controlled by it. I, I allowed it to define me. And um, it would, it would control the things I did. You know, if my friends were hanging out and if they were going to dinner, I would pack my own food or I would just watch them eat and not eat anything and like curse myself for even feeling that hunger, you know? Um, and there were a lot, like countless times that I would bail out on plans and say I couldn't go, usually at the very last minute. And I would be getting ready. I mean, I would be getting dressed. I was going to this thing and suddenly it was almost like I would remember what I looked like. And then I could not bring myself to leave, not even my room. I would just, I wouldn't make up, not make up, but I would throw all these horrible insults my way, like looking in the mirror just to make sure that I would not have the confidence to walk outside. Um, and it was at the core of it, it was just fear. I always was so hyper aware of other people looking at me and what they were thinking. And honestly, if one of them was going to come up and, you know, start bullying me because that, that is what I knew to be people's reactions to my body. And so that's what I constantly expected. And that's what I feared and tried to prevent. Um, and honestly, I was, I, I always feel like I noticed the treatment different from when I was bigger to when I was at my lowest. You know, there was a shift in how I was treated and different, you know, I was getting flirted with all of a sudden. And it, it's just, it sucks that there's any difference between the two because they're really shouldn't be we are just existing <laughs> um so yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always <sighs> yeah this you've heard this show before you know you know it's real you know we take the pauses that we need um it, it's hard it's hard to talk about these things and just because it's hard it's not stopping us from talking about these things because we really just want to better ourselves. I feel like um, what you were saying, I know that we were talking, we're, you know, did want to ask you about, you know, how was your self-esteem at that rate? Mm. Like this was, you know, roughly putting it to your timeline, you know, your sophomore to your senior year, more or less, even your, you skipped a lot of the sophomore year. So I'm assuming the last two years of, high school at yeah. the year of college and you were still at your lowest. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm assuming um, gaining your healthy way back what you needed to, because you know, you went to the extreme, but even within all that, your self-esteem was just shattered. Yeah, no, it, it completely was. And it's heartbreaking to like think back on and not that my self-esteem is like completely solid right now, but you know, at that point in time, it, 
it really was just crushed and it started affecting how I saw my, I mean, of course it affects how you see myself, but I felt like I was looking, I remember what I was seeing during that time when I would look in the mirror and it was not what I looked like. I mean, I'm looking at pictures back now from that time and I was so, I think I just looked very sick and, you know, malnourished because I was, um, but that's what I had wanted at that point. Like I was already there. And because of this, because this disorder consumes you and that's what people I feel like sometimes don't realize is that it can literally alter your brain functioning. So I was not seeing myself when I was looking in the mirror, I was seeing the same girl from eighth grade, you know, getting bullied. And even now I have trouble really being like, okay, this is what you look like, or you're, are you putting this onto yourself? And with that, it's like self-esteem is, feels almost impossible, you know, because you don't even know who you're looking at. You don't know who to believe, essentially. I couldn't even trust my own brain to show me what I looked like. And that's the craziest feeling. I mean, it's, it, if, I feel like if I could have told myself at 18, if I could have told my 12 year old self what it was gonna turn out to be and like how I wasn't gonna be happy, you know, I still, that's not what I needed to be working on. What I needed to be working on was me and my insecurities. Um, I was focusing on the wrong thing and I was changing for other people. Um, and so I, I think if I would, if I could tell myself that, I, I would hope that twelve-year-old me would be like, "Ugh, I'm good. Never mind." <laughs> it's like, okay, thank you for that. Really? Like, ooh, that sounds rough. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, it's so, just astonishing in, in in the worst and the best kind of way. I guess I don't know. I just I'm trying. I always try to gather up my thoughts, and even though we, yeah. know, I do have you know, it's written and stuff like that what this, these are just emotions that I feel after listening to your story like yours of course because it's still so young and this also goes back into what we're saying age is nothing but a number it doesn't matter I, like the amount of times that I've gotten when I was younger it's like oh you're just 15 what do you know or you're just 18 what do you know I'm still a human being in this world. I still had really rough experiences. And right mm -hmm. now, like in this particular case, we're just talking about eating disorders. We're not even talking about every other factor that comes within being exactly. this world, yeah. you know? And if you all know me, and I mean, if you don't, you can go search because my story is out there and I've had a pretty rough, you know, childhood and upbringing. And it's a lot of different things that happen in one. So it doesn't matter how old you are it matters, you know, what you lived or what has happened to you yeah. kind of experiences. Yeah. So still very young. Um, as some of you know, if you're coming from Brianna's episode, thank you very much for continuing being with us. Her first episode was also about eating disorders. Um, I also had Emily on. I always give her a huge shout out. Um, I'll link everyone down below, obviously, but um I had her way back in January the first time, and then we do some sort of specials. I was on her podcast in August, point B, and she talks all about eating disorders because she's also recovering, um, and she's a coach now, so she helps, and she, like, helps, you know, bring that into life and, like, normalize everybody and stuff like that, so it is a topic that we talk about a lot in a good way, kind of, like, saying not normalize the eating disorder itself, just normalize the message that speak up stand up for yourself and you know it's gonna be okay at the end as long as you work within yourself like you were saying and i have a two-parter question well the first one let's, let's start with the first one i guess is where are you now you know i i'm in a better place than i was but i think you know and it's something they always would tell us in treatment recovery is non-linear. There is no road, like right steady road to recovery. Um, and so, you know, it's, 
I'm better than I was, like I said, but I think it's still a struggle. It's a daily struggle. Um, and some months are a lot tougher than other ones. Um, but I think the difference now is that I don't want to continue this. You know, I know, I know that I don't want to be in the same place that I was and I want my body to be healthy. Um, and so now it's really just focusing on the relationship that I have with my body and that I have with food. Cause that's always a tough one. I feel like for everyone, you know? Um, and so really it's just rebuilding that relationship from what was like broken or toxic um, and rebuilding that into something that's sustainable that, you know, is really going to, give me the energy to totally take over Hollywood <laughs> yes. and change it for yes. the better. <laughs> yes. Manifest that ish. Of yes. <laughs> Love it. My, my second part of the same question was, so how do you self care and heal? How do you love yourself every day? Um, things I do. Let's see. I definitely love journaling. Um, and I've, I've started to just change the way I think about things and approach things. So now exercising is something that I enjoy for myself, but not because I want to lose weight, but really just because I want my, like I enjoy my body moving now. And so it's just these, the biggest way of self care for me is working on yourself. So doing um, like changing the way of your thinking and all of that. Um, I do a lot of reading definitely can always recommend amazing books, um, self-help books. And the biggest thing that's helped me is just constantly telling, not constantly telling my story, um, but telling my story and being okay with it. Um, this is really the first time I've like publicly talked about it, but I have written poetry about it and just found other ways to heal essentially, like to outwardly heal um, and get that out on paper. Because for me, it's the like biggest relief and just that I can feel with it. So it feels like a huge release. I love all the tips that you just gave us with that. And like you said, oh, talking constantly, wait, not constantly, but telling my story. I feel like I love that you took constantly out because yeah. you don't have to constantly talk about it. You don't. I Yeah. I, people uh, people ask me because of um of what I do here with the always believer we talk a lot about wellness of course and mind body and soul and every week you know we have a whole different episode and when it comes to hearing my story people are like oh you shared a lot or or how often do you share it or stuff like that and I'm like I share it the many times as much as I feel like my body is so mm -hmm. yes yeah I'm getting interviewed of course because I've been uh, one of these days, you keep asking me for this, I should put it, like, on my feed, but I have been interviewed with different people, and I always give props, um, point being, you know, for me, interviewed, of course, I want to talk about it, but even within the realm of the Always Believer platform, it's a, a thing that always pops up, and not because I don't want to talk about it, or I have, or have issues, it's just because you always have to what you said, pace yourself, and the more you talk mm -hmm. about it, yeah, the more you let go, but it comes to a time that you're kind of like, okay yeah no okay. it's also about like like listening to your body I think yes. is and your mind is like the greatest form of wellness and self-care because you're gonna know when you need to talk about it when you feel like you need that release and when you're just done you're like I don't need to dive into this again you know for a good three years three months however long um agreed yeah <laughs> so um how important is it for you to talk about these topics in general with your public, with your friends, family, just in general? Why did you choose this one? It really is important to me because almost every person I've shared with has said to me that they've felt something similar. Um, and that to me is just unacceptable. I mean, it's just not a way to live. No one... We shouldn't be expecting this. We shouldn't be expecting this type of, um, you know, sadness. Um, 
And so that's been a big reason for me and wanting to change, you know, the way we talk about things, of course, and bringing more awareness to it as well, especially for like older family members. And that's why I do talk about it with my family a lot Um, because they were raised some even more so like what you were saying, like it's gotten a lot better with these younger generations and what they experienced was a lot more blunt, I'd say. (laughs) Um, And so it's about if they're willing to make the changes. And um, yeah, I'm very passionate about just educating people and also learning because there are so many things to still learn about. Um, Without a doubt. Yeah. In every topic and including this one, of course. I also want to ask you before we continue with like the end part of our podcast, because I mean, come on, (laughs) I can easily talk forever, but (laughs) still, um, when did you ask for help? Like, when did you see your change from where you are today? Oof. um, That happened in about, I'd say college is when I really like buckled down and went to go get the help I needed. Um, And it was the best decision I ever made. You know, I was in, I had been in therapy throughout, you know, high school and everything, but going into a specialized like treatment plan for an eating disorder. And I've met amazing people. I, I finally didn't feel like it was just me. Like I wasn't alone. And I was you know, hearing these people and how they cope, what they went through and just feeling seen, really. Like I felt so seen and I didn't feel scared anymore because I knew that recovery was possible. And now I had all the tools. And I think that's the most, that's one of the biggest important things is having the tools and getting those resources. Um, And, you know, that's a whole nother topic of having access to that and everything. But um it is really important and I'm very, very like thankful to myself to this day that I went and got the help. So yeah, we think that's super important as well. We're definitely gonna also leave um resources for you guys to um yes. check back on and you know, like our doors always open, of course, but also get the help that you need without a doubt. Yeah. Um, what do you want to say to those who are going through the same thing right now? Oof. Well, one, of course, that you are not alone, as you've heard, you know. Um, and that this isn't, this doesn't have to be forever. That there's always a, like a way out. There is always, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. And even if it feels like this is never going to end and you're never going to feel any, you know, different than you feel right now, you are, and you're going to get to a point where you can be like, I'm going to get better. This is happening and we're good. Um, so really just push through. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. That's definitely basically our last question for today. Um, and that's the best way to, you know, finish <laughs> today's yeah. episode, really. <laughs> On a positive gonna, note. <laughs> exactly. Because I was even going to ask you, what's your message? But I feel like unless you want to say something more, you can, of course. No, I think really it's, it's that, you know, getting the help you need when you can and, and just knowing that it is going to get better. I know that's such a, I don't think it's overused. I think whenever people use it, it's true. But it's, it's true. I guess I it's hard agree. to accept. Yes. Hard to believe when you're in that moment. Um, Going back and, and throwing it back literally just a month for Brianna Salas. She always says it gets better. That was her like her three cent her three words. Mm-hmm. And she said more or less the same thing as well. For me, it was always <laughs> no pun intended actually. It was always <laughs> always <laughs> believe. <laughs> Oh, uh, nice. I know, right? Um, if you ever check out our about page or whatever, you know, when I was a child, I always said, always believe, because I always thought there was something better out there for me, that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, a better way. It's kind of the same thing as, you know, it gets better. The reason we named it, we, just me, myself, and I, the reason I named it 
<laughs> me and my little <laughs> Disney self tape almost been back on apparently. Uh, <laughs> the reason I named it the Always Believer is because um, everyone is the Always Believer. Like it's not just me. It's not my story. It's everyone's story. It's the community, and you can also be quote unquote Always Believer. All yeah. lines up to the same thing. It gets better. You will yeah. get better you know, this is not the end, like all these sorts of things. It's not a cliche. It's, it's easier than done. I do feel like we do use it for the right reasons though. Yeah. And I think one, one little message I just thought of, um, like a saying that I always tell myself, um, I actually have it tattooed, (laughs) but it's called, it's a Bob Marley quote. And it's, I did not come to bow. I came to conquer. And for me, that just holds a lot of meanings, but it really just means I'm not here to perform for anyone. This isn't, you know, I'm not doing any of my actions for other people. And I'm a freaking warrior and I can get through this and I'm going to conquer it all. Girl, you just made me tear up again. Adore that quote. I of course, Bob Marley. Of course, yes. oh, duh. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's such an inspirational quote, only for eating disorders in general. That we're not here for you. Yeah. We're here for ourselves and, and our journey. Our journey, and I can go on. And I know this is like the wrap of the this episode in particular, <laughs> but I can go on and talk about my tattoos and my pink hair and purple oh, hair yes. and my cleavage and my short skirts, but at the same time, oh, it's just, it's a long list. And Absolutely. with that sentence, it's something that I love that you have it tattooed because you, we need it tattooed. We need yes. it like engraved. I'll get it. <laughs> because that's literally, you know, a truth bomb or one of the biggest truth bombs there is we're so used to being what everybody else wants mm-hmm. and not talking Hollywood precisely just in general as a human yeah. being that we never have a chance to be ourselves and then when we start being ourselves no matter the age you're like ah oh, this is who I am this yeah. is and it's hard I think it's very hard especially people who've been abused in general Mm-hmm. I feel like it's harder, but still. So thank you for that um, quote. Yeah. We're definitely going to put it also in the description box. And just, yes. Like, it might be my next tattoo as well, because holy moly. I would love that. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> I don't, I love my tattoos, and we'll talk about this off screen. I yeah. want to say right now, the same thing happened with Brianna, because we want, like, the same tattoos as well. Oh. Um, I only have one quote. Well, I have two, because I do have Always Believe, and that's, like, a whole personal side story with my best friend but um I only have one quote and it's um laugh as much as you breathe love as long as you live oh I love that and um but I adore yours as well so thank yeah. you thank you for sharing the little tidbit and this ideas you know yes two lovers out there or just, just put a quote on top of your mirror you know what I mean yeah on your mirror, <laughs> like whatever <laughs> like, <laughs> just have it there um my last question of course the easiest one you could ever answer where can we find you <laughs> uh you can find me on instagram at uh belisa e no periods or anything <laughs> there you go definitely definitely tagged of course but i always let yes. people you know if they're like listening to this while they drive or whatever then it's there <laughs> So let's, um, yeah, we talked about eating horrors a whole lot today. There's plenty more coming. Please yes. tune in next week where we do talk about addiction and in all shapes and sizes, not if anything particular, you know, but you know how you overcame these obstacles with your mm-hmm. best foot forward and how just leaving that message behind of, of hope and light and love and everything else in between. Expect more tears, probably expect more laughs, Most maybe likely, some yeah. animals in the background, you know, it's life. Definitely. <laughs> and just enjoy the whole month uh, special with Feliz Escobedo, of course. Thank you very much for being here today and oh my God, till next week. <laughs> yes, thank you guys. Bye. Bye.